All right, everyone. So this is now going to be on the sources and uses of cash. Um, we're going to go through kind of a two-step process to show how you identify the, the sources and uses of cash. And why this is going to be important is because while looking at the financial statements, while looking, you know, here at, you know, the, the income statement and the balance sheet, it can be informative, right? And looking into the ratios is certainly um, a good step into understanding the how a company is functioning. Um, and one more thing, even within there, we will get some understanding of um, of how well we are, you know, using our you know, quote unquote cash. We found that in uh, some of our ratios, especially in liquidity ratios, do we have enough of it on hand? But it doesn't tell us how we used it. It doesn't tell us where the cash came in and where the cash left from. And so while I will have another, actually, you know what, let's just do it now. You, you got to think about when we, okay, when we're looking at trying to find the sources and uses of cash, what we're saying is the source is where did cash come in from? When we're saying the uses, we're saying where did the cash go to? Where did we use it for? Okay. And so when you think about an asset in, in general, anytime you see an increase of an asset, that had to have been a use of cash, right? Because if you buy something, then you have to use cash to, to, uh, to buy it, right? So in this case, if we have an asset that's going up, then we know uh, that typically that's going to be um, a use of cash. And if we have um, an asset that is going down, it's the opposite, right? That is a source of cash because we sell off maybe um, a building or maybe you know, my, my personal CEO helicopter or something. That would be cool, but I don't have one. Uh, so if I sold that, then I would, I would get some money, right? And that would be a cash uh, source. The opposite is also true. So for, or uh, sorry, it's the opposite for liability. So if we have an increase in a liability, then that is a source of cash. So if I go to the bank and get a loan, then that is where I'm getting money from. And if I go to the bank and pay off that loan, so if I reduce my liability, then that is a use of cash. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is in two steps. One, we're going to look for changes. So first we go, uh, you know, in this exercise, I'm only looking at 2006 to 2007 sources and uses. So I go to my cash, you know, first I'm looking for the change. So I say 2007 to 2006, what happened? Well, my cash increased by 6.2. Okay. Fair enough. So then I go to my accounts receivable. All right, so what happened there? And I'm just going to kind of go through and I'm going to do this, you know, kind of all the way down. Inventory is going to be the same thing. I just pushed control D, right? It's the same formula. I'm just copying it down one more cell because it's going down to the next row. Current assets, same thing. Net fixed assets, same thing. Total assets, 16.2 change, right? So actually, let's do this. Control Z. Let's paste it as a formula. Okay, 16.2 change. And then I'm going to do, uh, you know, pretty much the same thing all the all the way down, right? So I go here, my current portion of long-term debt. Yeah, no changes. And I'm going to again go through and kind of paste the formula. All right. And so now with a little bit of rounding errors, you'll see that the changes in our assets will equal the changes in our liabilities and equity, right? Or liabilities and net worth is what we're calling it here, but let's make it the same thing. So, and again, this is purely due to to, to rounding errors. Uh, why, it's, why it's that way? Because these numbers up here, if, if I show you just really quickly, because I want you to believe me. Um, yeah, these numbers in here, they, they are coming from some calculations that I did to produce them, right? So, um, so it's not just eight and two and four. And so the, that's, that's why we're seeing this off, but that's okay. We expect that, that's, that's a normal thing. So what we now wanna do is go over and identify our sources and, and our uses, right? And we wanna total those up. So did we collect an accounts receivable? So collection in accounts receivable, what we're going to look over here is 
an absolute number for what happened. So over here, we're not going to have positive and negative numbers. We're just going to have numbers. So we're going to make this maybe like an absolute here, ABS, and then I'm just going to click that number like that. Okay, reduction in inventory. I, I reduced my, my inventory, so that that's a good thing. And by the way, so I reduced my accounts receivable. What does that mean? That means that I'm not relying as much on my accounts receivable, right? I'm, I'm getting that cash in. So same thing in inventories. I reduced my inventory, so cash came in. So I can just kind of copy that uh, formula down. Uh, sale of fixed assets, right? Did I sell any fixed assets? Well, where we will find that is if it reduced. So it did, it, re it reduced. So now we can take absolute and we can just click that number. And increase in net worth. Did our in net worth increase? It did. And that basically is letting us know uh, that um, you know how it could increase is, is one of two ways. First of all, let's do just to make it you know, the same as rest. Now we have these numbers. Let's put them into the same number format. So how could that increase of net worth have happened? Well, two things. Um, and again, when we say net worth, we're talking about equity. Well, two things could have happened. One, you know, so an increase, increase in equity can happen from one of two things, right? One, we issue new equity. And that means we we find new investors who buy shares of ownership that gives us cash, right? So I don't need to finish writing that out. And the second way, right, actually let me, the second way we can do it is, is net income, right? Net income and more specifically, not just net income, but it's actually our retained uh, earnings, which is our net income minus dividends. So in other words, what our company is making and what we're reinvesting into the company. So either one of those ways, we're going to be getting cash. So that's a great thing. So now we will just push, and here's another trick. You can push the alt sign, alt, alt and F equals. Let me see if I can get my little uh, pad here. I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing. I'm trying something new here, so just bear with me. You'll you'll notice by now I'm becoming kind of a geek with my uh, software. So it's going to be Alt and equal sign, and that will just make a quick sum of all those changes. And that's going to be here, right? So let me let me show you. It's going to be Alt and equal sign. See? That's what I'm doing. Okay, so let me just let me close that. And yeah, so now we, we do the same thing down here. So an increase in cash equals absolute on the cash. So cash increase, that means that now we have a little bit more uh, money uh, that we can um, you know, the, well, the the point here is that if we if we increase our cash, uh, it's a use because you know think about if you're going to the store, right? And and you 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 increase you go to the store to go buy like a like maybe a bottle of milk and you pull some cash out of your pocket, right? Well, that was that that amount of cash that you put into that account, that cash account, to be able to uh, to to buy that milk. That was a use of cash, right? So the increase of cash was actually a use of cash. I don't know if I explained that really well. I'll try to come back and find a better ex explanation for that later. In the meantime, let's move on and just memorize it. Okay, so reduction in accounts receivable there. Uh, reduction in accrued expenses. Yeah, so that's going to be here. Uh, repayment of credit um, to the bank. So that's going to be up here. Repayment of mortgage debt. Sorry, one second. Recredit of pet payment. Recredit. Blah. Repayment of credit to the bank is actually going to be this, right? 
So there. And repayment of mortgage debt. There we go. Equals absolute here. Long term debt. Sorry, I got a little out of out of my, my element there for a second. Actually one second. Sorry, I, I made a mistake here. So accounts payable, I clicked the wrong uh, cell. I, I took accounts receivable. So I was looking at this and I thought, well, that, that that's not right. Um, and there, now we got it. So, and we could, you know, since those rounding errors want to mess with us, we can we can mess with them too, right? We'll we'll just round to where our things balance out. But but that that's how that works, right? So. Again, just to recap, now let's make this pretty. Um, this is this is we're starting with our balance sheet and we're looking at how our capital moves around, right? What do we what do we spend money on is essentially what we want to find out. And when we look at the sources of cash, you know what's going to be interesting to us. You know, here we look at equity. Well, we would want to ask ourselves: Did we issue new equity to anybody, or was that from net income? You know, that that could be that's a solid number. Um, you know, as a you know, percentage of our total sources, that uh, if it's increased in equity, and we know that equity is coming from uh, retained earnings, and that's a that's a good thing, right? Um, for let's see, for sales of fixed assets. Well, if that number was large, if the sale of fixed assets was really large, as a percentage of our total sources, that could be really worrisome. And why is that? Well, the reason is because it's not operational. You know, if we were to break out, and we can do this, build a, a cash flow statement. Uh, if we were to build a cash flow statement, it would. Um, it, this would not be an operational item, right? This would be uh, an investment item. Uh, reduction of inventory, um, you know, accounts receivable. You know, this collection number as well. If we would want to check to see is this number, you know, abnormally, um, you know, high, and but more importantly, down here at the bottom, you know, these are these are things that that would be uh, really interesting to me as a as a manager or as an investor. Um, you know, the reduction in accounts payable, right? So, so what that means is. You know, if I'm if I'm reducing the amount of money that I owe outstanding, um, that is that is a use of cash, right? Um, and the reason is because, well, I'm I'm basically paying off things earlier. So, if my accounts receivable is is kind of low, right? So I'm I'm not collecting very fast, but I'm at the same time extending a lot of credit to my 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 suppliers, for example. Well, then I could be in a in a dangerous situation, especially if knowing what we saw in previous ratios exercises in terms of you know, changes all the way from top line growth to uh, to some of our operational margins. Um, and then another thing here, you know, repayment of uh, of credit to the bank, you know, that's coming from our revolving credit, and and that's just a lot of it's a lot of money that we're having to pay off to revolving credit to the bank. Um, you know those those two items would be concerning to me, but what I would you know want to really do is I would want to do the same exercise um, over over several years, right? So I would want to to go through and and do the same thing for 2007, you know, from from all the way from 2003 to 2007, and the reason why we want to do that is because it will help us to see, um, you know what management did. Okay, let's take a pause here and we'll come back next time and maybe I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll already have that fixed out so we can talk about it and not do it in real time. Have a nice one. Talk to you soon.